Hello, this is David and Susan, and we're going to show you part of what you have to do if you have a stove. Uh, we've got a day where it's 40 degrees outside, and it's a good time to swab out the chimney. We haven't swabbed it out since before we lit up in September. And uh, what we've done is let it burn down, covered up all the coals with ashes. And I have to reach in here and take that baffle down. So there's a baffle that goes across and then the flue goes up above that baffle. And what I've got to do is put my chin on there, lean in and grab that baffle with my welding gloves and get it down on the ground, on the bottom. So anyway, I got my, got my chin rest on top. And the key to enjoying your stove is to always run a hot fire so you don't clog up that chimney. You run it wrong, you'll clog that chimney every month and have to clean it. And here is uh, January. We cleaned it out in September and we're st it's still burning good. So here we go. I'm going to pick it up, pull it out, lay it down. Here, move in there, show what we got, Susan. And, and there we go. There's the baffle. And the goes up right there. So anyway, now I go up on the chimney and uh, clean it out from above. So there we go. No trouble so far. And when you clean that chimney, shut your draft. If you don't shut your draft, um, the chimney will be throwing soot up in your face every time you get over it. So, close your draft. Okay, here we are up on the roof. And next step is to loosen these. And uh, take loosen those, take that cap off, and then drop our cleaner in. So I'm gonna turn this off again while I take that loose. and it was stuck down with tar but all you got to do is just give it a little bump give it a little bump up that comes loose take that off set this aside and I'll try not to drop the camera down the hole okay and there yeah you can see we got some pretty good little growth in there definitely needs to be swabbed out yeah, there's some pretty good chunks in there. That, uh, that stuff uh, condenses as it comes up into the cold chimney. Now the bottom fireplace hardly ever gets anything in it. The chimney's already warmed up by the time we light that. It's, it's, we swab it out once a year whether it needs it or not. This upper one we need to hit it. Now this is our cleaner. That thing, uh, when, you pull on, when you pull on this one, it spreads out. So I'm going to drop that down. Sometimes you have to kind of drill on it. You start out with it collapsed. Punch through that. major chunk of it. And it goes on down and it's clean as it goes down. Go on down. It's clean down there. You get down there, I feel it sitting on top of the stove right there. So I pull it up a little bit. I hang on to this one. There we go. I got it expanded now. And we just bring this up. You get hard to pull as it comes through the crud. Look up in that crud. Run her up and down. There. Okay. Now 
Okay. Now I'm gonna lower it down and pop it open again. As you punch that down, open or close it up. When I jerk on the, this one right here, that opens it up. So I lower it down with the other one. Get down the clear. There we go. Got it expanded again. Not tight. Run up and down. There we go. And that is done. Now we put the uh, put the cap back on it. That cap makes a big difference. It runs a lot better with that cap on it. You don't get cold air falling down the chimney with this cap on. There we go. Tighten these two screws down. And then we go back downstairs, clean out the, the junk that falls into the stove, put the baffle plate back up, dig out the ashes, pile our coals up, and put wood back on it, and we're done. Tighten this one up. There we go. Cut that tight. Tighten that one again. That's good. Okay, we're done up here. Okay, thank you very much. We're going to go downstairs now. Go back down the steps. Uh, one of the things you come up on the roof with a ladder and you do this on a day when the roof is dry <laughs> Do not do it on a wet roof <laughs> Okay, we'll go downstairs and clean out the stove next Okay, hey, that's great. Anyway, as soon as we move around here, you can see the pile of stuff that came out and a pile of black creosote in there And uh, I'm dip that off Ease that into the bucket. Try not to make a lot of dust when the doors are open and the, you know, the chimney will draw the dust right up. So it's not a big problem. Now, doggy dogs. That's uh, Mina wanting to play with one of the other dogs. Mina, baby. Mina. Oh, she's wanting to play with Lisa. Okay. Now, I'm going to reach up here. Okay. Nothing else is falling down. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, set this aside. It's going to stay up here on the hearth. That's warm. And I'm going to put my chin pad up here. Get my heavy gloves on. That thing tapers. You have to bring it forward, raise it up, shove it back. I hope you hit it the first time. It's rather heavy. And I got it. One go. That's amazing. Okay, other gloves, and we're going to clean the ashes out. You want to get all that creosote that you knock down because that, that stuff will go right back up the chimney and cling when that chimney's cool. Get all that out. Okay, now we're going to roll the ashes off. Oh, look at the lovely coals. Oh boy. Susan got up early this morning and stoked the fire up, so we got a really nice bunch of coals. She does that. I go out with the dogs in the morning. She gets out here, puts wood on the fire. When it starts smoking like that, close it up and get it out. <laughs> okay. Now those coals got in there on the, on the creosote so back to smoke. Okay. Open the draft, get some wood, and we got a fire again. Thank you very much for visiting. That's kind of how it goes. Uh, if you run your fire hot, you don't have to clean the chimney very often. If you 
load that firebox up and choke it down, you'll be cleaning it, you know, at least once a month. So uh, mind your fire.